I'm uh, Hyman Wertheim. I'm a clinical microbiologist. So I'm a medical doctor trained in clinical microbiology. And I was trained in the Netherlands. And then I moved to Vietnam in 2006 for Okru Hanoi and sort of developed a unit over there. And our main focus is drug-resistant infections, but there's a whole wild variety of other diseases that we're also studying. Yeah, so we started in 2006. And we were really focusing on severe influenza infections. But we mainly saw that we saw a lot of drug-resistant infections, really, caused by bacteria. So these people were failing sort of antibiotics we would consider that should work. Uh, and then we sort of refocused the things that we were doing and actually really focusing, okay, what is actually causing drug-resistant infections and what can we do about them? What you also saw mainly is that people come into the hospital for a reason maybe unrelated to the infection, and then they get, because of the mechanical ventilation, they get pneumonia because of the mechanical ventilation. So the sort of the local immune system is damaged and then they get an actually a hospital acquired infection which is drug resistant and these people are failing sort of standard therapies. If you look more in the community level, um, the problem there is that there's actually very little diagnostics being done. But we have a, do have a feeling that you see people coming in into the hospital uh, with drug resistant infections acquired in the community. We diagnose them with resistant uh, bugs. So you think it's really high but probably in the community it's a bit less of a problem, but still it's there, and we only see in the hospital the sort of the cases that failed. So we really do not know clearly the burden of drug-resistant infections in the community. Even in the Netherlands, where, which is one of the lowest rates of resistance and the lowest rates of antibiotic use, also there and also in the UK, you, you actually see also problems coming from outside. Eh? Uh, people actually traveling, coming back with uh, resistant bugs, and actually you've seen cases of that, so it's really actually happening. This is not like something that may happen in the future, it's really happening now. And so I don't think you can just only focus on your own country. You really should be able actually to go there where it really sort of uh, it has the highest burden and actually also try to do something there because it's one way or the other, it's also going to come to Europe. So that's why we're actually studying uh, drug resistance in Asia. And I think it's an important place to actually um, do something and not just on the individual patient, but also on the policies and really uh, make a change, and it will not be a change just for Vietnam, it will also be a change for global health. The nice thing about Hanoi is it's really close to the Ministry of Health, uh, so anything that you find is actually also have impact on policies. So rather than focusing also just on an individual patient or doing clinical trials, we also thought like, I can actually engage the policy makers and really make a change on a sort of a larger scale. The main change in our research in the last five to ten years, so that we uh, moved also from hospital-based research also into the communities. Um, so we did, are doing clinical trials and looking at uh, how rapid diagnosis can help actually bring down antibiotic use in the community. As you can see in the communities, um, if you come in for an upper respiratory tract infection, which doesn't require an antibiotic, uh, by doing a looking at a biomarker, a rapid test, rather than looking for a specific pathogen, um, result within three to five minutes, and we found that this was really helpful in actually bringing down antibiotic use by 20%. The 20% reduction is probably an underestimate because um, many centers, these were primary healthcare centers, were actually not always compliant because they had a stock of antibiotics that they still need to get rid of. So you have to, which is very interesting because it shows you also have to take into account sort of procurement procedures for these clinics and actually also look in those kinds of things. You should fund the research as drug resistance is a global health issue. It's now called also by the Uni United Nations as a global crisis. We can't just you know, focus on our own countries. We should really take a global approach with the knowledge and expertise that we have and really work with the local people and strengthen their capacities and make them feel responsible and engage them and actually make them take the lead and uh, let them really uh, do the things that they should do. So in Okru Hanoi, so we work really closely with the National Institute of Health and Epidemiology, which is the public health authority. So what we do is really focus on public health issues, so how our work from laboratory to happening, what's happening with the patient or the communities is, for instance, we had a, um, a measles outbreak. Uh, even though there's the, the government says that there's a very good coverage for measles, uh, actually we su saw through our zero prevalence data that people were not protected enough and explained the outbreak, showing that uh, the work that we can do in the lab can actually help and make a change for public health, for instance.